This is a question from Bob, and he writes this. Um, he says, uh, Penny, many people, including yourself, have opined that part of the advancement of the human race will include telepathy and also have observed that many of the problems with our current society will be solved when we know each other's thoughts and intentions. My question involves sex and telepathy. Great question. I haven't heard anyone talk about the gigantic implications of having a sexual relationship with someone who knows what you are thinking while you know what they are thinking. Of course, what I just mentioned is the alarming or scary part of it, but I imagine that there will be many barriers and problems removed and enhanced experiences as well. It's an understatement, Bob. <laughs> With your experience in other realities, maybe you could comment on how these other civilizations deal with the transparency that will come with telepathy. How might it change sexual relations? Thank you. So it's like, oh my God, this is a great question. Uh, so let me... Um, let me say that the question is not about telepathy, it's about sex. And the problem is that, you know, Bob, you're trying to impose telepathy, which is an advanced uh, capability or capacity on a lesser developed system, which is what we're in right now. Okay, when you develop yourself to the point that you have telepathy, then it, it, let's say that everybody in the system, everybody in this reality gradually, um, you know, develops telepathy. As you do that, everything about your system changes, including the sexual relationship. And one of the things that occurs is that you begin to be able to answer the question, why is there sex? you begin to understand that sex is a healing tool and that other more advanced civilizations, some of them do have sexual relationships and they do have the, um, they do have a coming together, but most of them, many of them, for <laughs> this, this is, comes from personal experience, um, they use sex totally differently. So my first experience with sex in an advanced civilization was I'm in an alternate reality. A group of people, four people walk up to me. They take one look at me. They see immediately that I am, um, I don't even have the word. I'm just going to say that I, they see that my frequencies are out of tune. And one of them walks up to me and puts his finger on my upper arm. And instantly, I have two or three reactions. One is full body orgasm. The second is a huge buzzing noise like <laughs> and the third is an electrical shock. And immediately, I was transformed, I was calmer, I had clarity. I was able to be telepathic. Um, and that is how sex is used in at least one other reality. They use it to heal one another. And of the four, and I'm guessing here because I never had the sense to ask at that point in time. But when I go back and I think about how they were looking at me, I think they were communicating among themselves as to, Who's going to fix her? Who's going to adjust her? Is she willing? Is she capable of handling that kind of transmission of love and power and, you know, whatever? And one of them stepped forward. Um, and I then was telling that to my friend, Bob Monroe, and he had a number of those same kinds of experiences. People in other dimensions, other reality systems, 
don't use sex the way we use it. They're in a state of bliss most of the time, or I won't say bliss. They're in a state of great satisfaction and joy um, all the time. When your frequencies get out of whack, when they get out of tune, you begin to experience anxiety. You begin to experience this feeling of frustration. You begin to feel not well. And the goal for most people, and that is the goal of, of sex here. Why do we have sex? We have sex because we need to readjust. We need to, uh, there's a term in computers, we need to resynchronize our system with, with source. And that resynchronization is what we call the sexual experience. So, you know, two people come together, they're making love, um, they reach orgasm. That orgasm is the resynchronization moment. And that then leads to feeling somewhat relaxed, calm, you know, um, creative. Sometimes there's a creative uh, thinking that occurs after that because you have more clarity, et cetera, et cetera. In some of the advanced civilizations um, that don't have a full physical body like we have here, um, they still come together and they, I'll call it, they merge um, in a way in which they each add to one another's energy and in doing so produce that same kind of synchronization moment, the orgasmic bliss moment. Source is a state of constant orgasmic bliss. When we make love, we just step back into that for a minute to get back in touch with the source of ourselves. So telepathy is, don't imagine that you're going to do sex or think of sex or practice sex the same way in, a, in an advanced or more developed reality system that we're doing it here. Here, it's kind of time consuming. It's a kind of clumsy. It's kind of messy. Um, it's wonderful. It's, it's intense. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, other races of people have other ways of coming together. Um, but almost always, it is considered to be you need to get back in touch with source in order to reorganize in the most efficient way. When you have an orgasm, energy moves up through you or the ideal organ orga <laughs> orgasm is when that energy moves all the way up through you, creating a Kundalini experience and rewiring you and expanding the number of frequencies you have access to. So the goal, the need for expansion never goes away. And so sex changes characteristics and practices and behaviors, but it doesn't go away no matter how far up you go. And then you enter into um, a state of becoming source and you, you step into that orgasmic bliss and you just stay there. But you lose your individual self when you do that. So um, it's hard to get your mind around that. If you haven't had that, that Kundalini experience, it's like, what? I don't exist? Well, yeah, you do, but you're all of it. You're the I am. You are the bliss. So, um, so that's, you know, the short answer, okay? Um, I'll ask you a question, but it might not make sense. So Okay. When you talk about when you have an orgasm here in the physical body and yep. you rearrange your frequency set in the very, very um, specific uh, Asian drawings, you see that it has to do with the, you know, the, the serpent going up the spine and coming out to the right. crown of the head. And so when you talk about that, I'm always trying to imagine other species, other, other races of beings when they have the, I don't know what they call it. They probably don't call it sex. They probably call it something else, but yeah. what does that look like? So, because you said it goes up the spine and then rearranges. So does everybody, all other species have a spine? Like I have trouble imagining. So if you don't have a physical body like here on earth, 
Okay. What does it look like? Um, okay. So um, you've heard me say that everybody is a collection of plasmas. Okay. How do plasmas interact? They interact by spiraling around one another in order to channel information through the input side of the system and out the output side of the system. So when you talk about the spine, we have a physical spine, but really that spine is just, it happens to be in the center of that spiral of those two inter spiraling intertwining uh, frequencies that are spiraling up through the body mind system. Okay, so if you don't have a physical spine, that's irrelevant. If you are an individualized region of consciousness, you have information coming through, and it's coming through on those uh, spiraling or intertwining base frequencies. And from that, everything else unfolds. That so makes sense? Yeah, but if you talk about input-output, my limited mind here has trouble understanding. So if you say input-output, I can see, okay, the, 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 the energy comes in through the base of the, uh, the, of the spine, right. so to speak, even yeah. if there's no spine there, and then it, it comes out. It comes into the bottom of the system. Okay, so everybody... Think of it as a torus. It comes into the bottom of the torus. Ah, that's my question. So everybody has that shape regardless yes. of anything else. So there's always, all systems with their plasma will always have that torus right. shape where there's an input and output. And that's where the, okay, so now that makes sense. Okay. Okay, and that's where the aura, quote unquote aura, comes from. It's that big torus. And it expands and gets bigger. The most efficient shape in the entire universe is the sphere. It's the torus. And energy comes in. What is that energy? It's really information. And what is the um, possibility with that information? It's that you can enjoy life. You can enjoy life and you can impact life and you can experience different levels of life. You can have all kinds of organizational stuff happening within the sphere, including physical. So, so that sloppy messy way that we call sex here of exchange yeah. of fluids is is it something because we're primitive or is it something that could also be in other reality systems or is it something that to be regarded as ooh by other beings or you yeah, know they have some of that it's because there is no other way because we're not powerful enough to recreate or reproduce without that yet okay that exchange of fluids, the sperm goes into the female, the, the egg gets fertilized, we reproduce. Other species are powerful enough to reproduce without that exchange. So, and it's absolutely magical to see that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we do, it is, you know, kind of a sloppy, messy thing at the physical level, but as we grow, as we develop our consciousness, um, that will change and we will, many, many species, especially advanced species without the spiritual development, uh, they just take to um, uh, uh, cloning, genetics, uh, test tube, uh, and they're very successful, very successful. What's missing for them is the absolute and utter spunk and sass of the, of the human being. You're picking up energies, that little infant that's developing that, you know, first it's an egg and a sperm, and then it's a marula, uh, looks like a mulberry. Um, and then it begins to go through all these stages of development. It is picking up and shaping itself according to the light moving through the mother's body and that light is is imprinting that little tiny development developmental creature with all of the information that is the mother and the father so so this is the light that you've talked about a light that has no shadow right the light that, that is right um, we know various kinds of light 
Um, we just don't have much experience, I guess would be the way to say it, um, with light that casts no shadows. We're used to UV light, infrared has a little bit of light to it. Um, you know, there's Ramon scattering, all kinds of different uh, sorts of light, but we're used to here, you know, the physical light in the ceiling or in the lamp. Um, and that's it. But there are many, many kinds of light. And we have not even started our research and exploration into what kind of light is that? And what does that light do? So, yeah, x-rays are a good example. That's a form of light. Um, light is energy in a particular form. Just to come back to Bob's comments about sex and telepathy. So, in other more evolved races, just slightly even more evolved, this question wouldn't come up because everybody's telepathic and the idea is not about this sacred, um, yeah. a very secret thing that we call sex here because, you know, it's been kind of distorted a lot because of the church. Well, yeah, the church, yeah, the church uh, has ruined it for most people. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, the reason that they've ruined it is because it results in um, superhuman people. It result that Kundalini experience results in a consciousness that is vastly more advanced than they are, and they don't want that. So they make uh, sex bad, which greatly limits the evolutionary principle within a human. So his last sentence: With your experience and other realities, perhaps you could comment on how these other civilizations deal with the transparency. Those who choose to become advanced civilizations and to develop telepathy eventually discover that truth, love, and generosity, all the ethics are absolutely non-negotiable. And, and you begin to trust that others in your system carry those same ethics, those same principles of action and behavior. So the whole thing, I mean, um, let's, let's use a common example. Uh, you know, a guy who's out of love, who's fallen out of love with his wife and he's making love to her because she's available, but he's thinking about some woman at the office or that he saw on the street or in the store or whatever, or on a, in a movie. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's common. That would then be, you know, if you were really being telepathic, um, the husband and wife who he's fallen out of love with her, she would know that. And she would say, well, you need to, if, if she truly loved him. So let's talk about what, what really is love. True love is wishing another well, wishing another the best that life could offer. And so if she knew that he wasn't in love with her anymore, she would say, well, you need to go do something different or go find yourself or go whatever. Um, and, and she would let go of him and maybe find a better lover in whoever she comes across next and him, same thing. So that's a small stage in the developmental process for humans. Um, but we haven't even begun to get to the point where we have enough love and enough generosity to say, you know, if, if you're not in love with me, you should go do, you need to turn on your love and your passion. That's critical for development. And if it's not me and I'm hanging on to you, then I'm interfering with your development. And I do not want that on my conscience or in my karma. And I don't, that means I'm cutting myself off for what? You know, maybe there's something more out there for me as well. We haven't gotten to that point. People hang on. They're afraid. They, they're they jealous. All of that is perpetrated by Madison Avenue and all of that romantic crap that they publish. And and mind you, I, I think romance is good. I think it drives us in some good directions. Um, but when it comes down to the hard questions of how do I spend my life? we do not know love. Love is not what we think it is, or it's not what many people think it is. You know, it's wishing another well. Very simple. 
And it's an honest response. So, you know, let's say if Bob didn't love his wife, um, the honest response would be, oh, I, you know, I'm not in love with you. I need to go be by myself or find someone else or, or something. Something's missing here. Or I'm going through a phase of my own change or development. Um, and I don't know what that is. So bear with me. And if it doesn't change after a while, then it's like, well, it didn't change. Um, we need to come apart. And of course, then you have the legal system that has their fingers in the pie. That whole legal system is that's a major mistake for people to. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, it gets deeper and deeper. Um, but the legal system really wants control um, over both sexes, number one, and they want control um, over who is legitimate. It started over who's legitimate, and that's their excuse. You know, this child is legitimate or illegitimate. Um, that's crap. Every single human being is legitimate, period. Um, but the legal system really wanted to know or be able to track everybody being born because they had designs on that individual's future. If it's a woman, well, she'll produce 2.8 children. If it's a male, well, we can send them to war or we can expect these many years of productivity and this many years of taxes out of them. So it gets complicated and people don't see it. They're sold on the romance thing. So if you love somebody and you want to spend your life with them or you want to spend the next year with them or whatever it is, do that. But don't get involved with the legal system. That's a mess. So, and you so, pay through the nose when you try to untangle legally. That was a great question, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Thank you.